The following tutorial is brought to you by wholeloops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today is all about upgrades. As you can see, I've been busy doing a little upgrading to my studio, and Ableton has been busy doing some upgrades to their software. Just a couple days ago, Ableton announced their latest version, Ableton 10, and I've put together a list of my top five reasons why you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade, and these are just based off of my last couple days using the software. So starting with reason number one, the biggest game changer is groups within groups. Now this has a organizational and mixing application. In the same way you would use groups, I can now take my 808 kick, isolate them into their own group within the bigger drums group, and then leave the rest of my percussions and snares and stuff that aren't the kick in their own group with a little bit of side chain to my kick out here. I can keep everything kind of consolidated by style of instrument and uh, within it do some more advanced mixing and organizational stuff. And obviously you can color it all. The clips look nice with the colors that you choose. Um, there's a couple of other graphic things like the font and the background color. And I'm not even going to waste your time with that. Um, but yeah, this groups within groups is going to be absolutely fantastic. Number two, uh, Ableton has been pretty bad, not quite as bad as Logic with automation, but Ableton is definitely down there as one of the worst softwares to work in automation with until now. Uh, they have created an entire mode dedicated to automation with this button right here. And when you open it up, you're like, oh, well, this looks like it used to. Uh, but the beauty is you can now choose when you do and don't want to see the automation points. And when you have this toggled off, no matter what you touch, uh, on a plugin or anywhere else on the controls, it's not going to open it back up unless you choose to. And then when you do, it kind of looks like Ableton used to where you have your drop down menus with all of your automation options. And another huge upgrade is the points now snap to the grid. This is huge because most of the time I want them to, and they never did. They finally do now. I'm so happy about this. Uh, there's also a few other things, like if you hold shift, it locks it vertically if you wanted to just raise or lower something. Uh, and I think there's also, if you hold shift and go in the other direction, it will prevent you from going up or down and just let you go side to side. That is amazing. Are you a music producer that loves making blazing hip hop bangers? Do you want your trap beats to sound extra crispy? Then get ready to shake the block. Introducing Urban Beats, the all new sample pack featuring exclusive trap loops, over 300 urban drum samples, and the most disrespectful 808s your neighbors have ever heard. Urban Beats is available now only at holeloops.com. Reason to upgrade number three, editing multiple MIDI clips at the same time. This is gonna be useful for lining things up if you don't quantize stuff and you want to line things up, you can now highlight both of them. And uh, let's see, let me hold shift. I'm sorry. If you hold shift, highlight both of them, you can now toggle right here in the MIDI window which one you're editing. You could switch back and forth with the ease of just clicking on the ones that are kind of grayed out. I wish you could work on all of them at the same time. Uh, oftentimes I transpose the whole song and have to do all these clips individually. This doesn't really help you out for that, but I guess this is halfway there. Still super useful, especially for aligning things like timing. Number four is not really something that I could show you. It's more of something that runs in the background and that is saving and backups. You no longer lose your undo history when you hit the save button. That was just stupid. I don't know whose idea that was to begin with, but they finally took that away and it works great. In addition to that, it now automatically creates backup versions of your work as you go, keeps them in, a, in the project folder. So should you spend an entire night working on a song and bounce it out and the next morning realize that you actually made it worse and you wanna go back, you now can go back. And my fifth and final reason to upgrade 
is another game changer. I hope all the other softwares kind of catch up to this and it's called Note Chase. So I've layered a marimba and a piano. And the piano holds it out for the entire uh, measure. Normally, if you wanted to hear this chord, you'd have to put your playhead before where the chord begins. And like if you would start it right here, you wouldn't hear the piano, but now, if you just heard in Ableton 10, it re-triggers it if you start it in the middle of a chord, even though the beginning of the chord is somewhere back here. This is amazing. Again, one of those things where I never understood why we didn't get this sooner, but hey, we got it. I'm not complaining. I'm very happy it's here. There's a whole bunch of other stuff where if you don't have any software at all, you'd probably find really exciting because, you know, it's just more in the box. But for advanced users who are already using their VST plugins and kind of got their own setup and their own workflow, I only found this short list of things that I would say were definitely a major upgrade. The rest of them, I don't think really constitute an entire new version, but there you have it. My top five reasons to upgrade. All my tutorials going forward are going to be in Ableton 10. So uh, if these first five reasons weren't enough to do so, maybe that will get you to make the change. I will see you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.